You know, I, I, uh, there's a lot of challenges, and we can talk about cap and trade and, and what that means and how that's going to eliminate jobs and how that's going to increase your the power bill of your family, $1,900 a year. And, and we can talk about health care. And, and, and I know, and you're right, every candidate that comes through here, I know, is going to say the same thing about, you know, the, the, the health care bill. And, and on the Republican side, we're always going to offer Feel it. We're all going to promise that we understand you can't feel it. You have a White House, so you got to be funded. They all going to say the same thing. So what's the difference? What's the difference between Steve Sutherland and all the other candidates? So instead of just answering the same questions over and over and over again, like all the other Republican candidates, what I'm going to do today is tell you, watch Steve Sutherland. Watch Steve Sutherland. What? I think, uh, I think I can uh, make a commitment. I was taught that when uh, when you start something, you don't stop when you finish. And you finish strong. Uh, and I'll continue to finish strong. I'm going to run as hard as I can. We do polling. We do polling. We look at numbers. And I'll tell you, those numbers look good. And all that does is make me want to run harder and run faster. I will not rest. Because my four daughters deserve a dad that's going to run hard. I work hard, I run hard, I play hard, and I do it with the six values that my parents taught us. The six values that are deeply held in my life that I want to be a part of everything that I do. Respect, discipline, excellence, honesty, courage, and loyalty. Those are values that I just memorized and get part of my campaign speech. Now, if you go back over my life, I believe you will find those six values are part of my life. My adolescence, my high school years, my college years, my marriage to my wife, the raising of my children, the operations of our business, the chairing of the various organizations in our community, the chairing of the Bay County Chamber of Commerce, the Military Affairs Committee, the Economic Development Alliance, uh, the Early Learning Coalition, caring for 5,000 children in seven counties, at the behest of Governor Bush. Um, everything that I've done, I wanted to live life. My granddad always told me when I was in well, son, if you don't have enough time to do it right, you certainly don't have enough time to do it over. So do it right the first time. Do it right the first time. The older I get, the smarter my mom and dad get. <laughs> and I mean that. And I mean that. I have a steady, Stable home. One man, one woman. They loved each other. And we did. We did. We were that. And we knew that dad loved mom and mom loved dad. Second only for their love of God. But then after God, after each other, then we the children were that. We always knew that there was security, safety, forgiveness. Expectations, but it was a safe place. And you know what? The American family has always been the bedrock of a strong American culture. As a nation, as a family goes, so goes a nation. I was asked two weeks ago, what is the biggest problem in this country right now? What's the biggest challenge? I was asked that in Marianne. All of my opponents defaulted the economy, federal spending, federal government, war. Those are our problems, and they're big problems. But they pale in comparison to the biggest problem. The biggest problem you will find in the disintegration of the family. The disintegration of the family. And I'm proud to tell you this, and I know that to be fact because I came from a good one. Solid, consistent, commitment. My mom would say with her South Alabama vernacular, stickability. And I'm going to tell you this you pick on one of us. We're coming. You got the whole thing. 
We have a commitment to one another that's an iron will. And I believe that what we need right now is we need men and women to go to the United States Congress with those kind of values. Understand that it is time now not to just send a leader. All of my opponents will talk about leadership. They'll talk about how they're great leaders. But there is one I believe, and I'm privileged to be standing before you right now, who all of his life has been a leader of leaders. That, that is what we need. I've never been a member of anything. It pains me to even ride in a car. I want to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and had I driven, we might have gotten here. <laughs> Thank you. 